All right, it is time to begin our Royal Rumble countdown. Again, we are starting with match number 10 in what is going to be a ranked countdown from 10 to 1 of the top 10 greatest championship matches in Royal Rumble history. We're going to do one match per week leading up to the 2019 Royal Rumble coming up at the end of January. And so number 10 on the list is the Intercontinental Championship match Last Man Standing between Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens from the 2016 Royal Rumble in Orlando. At TLC the month before this, Ambrose had beaten Owens to win the Intercontinental Championship and they feuded for weeks, which is what led to this Last Man Standing stipulation here. Owens was coming off a very impressive first year on television, one of the true success stories of moving someone from NXT up to the main roster and not getting lost in the shuffle. His very first night on Raw, he, as the NXT champion, he challenged John Cena. He, he answered his open challenge when Cena was doing the U.S. title open challenge gimmick. He didn't have a match, but he laid him out. He put his foot down on the championship belt, put his boot right down on top of it, and made a statement. His very first night in. In their very first match together at Elimination Chamber, he pinned John Cena cleanly in the middle of the ring. Now, he did lose. He did go on to lose two straight matches after that to John Cena. But he went on to win the IC title from Ryback at Night of Champions. Ambrose lost to Roman Reigns in the finals of the WWE Championship Tournament at Survivor Series after Seth Rollins had gone down with the Achilles injury. I think it was the Achilles uh, or maybe it was ACL, but he had suffered that that you know traumatic injury and had to forfeit the championship. And so after losing to Roman Reigns in the finals, he transitioned into this feud here with Dean Ambrose, or, or, or Kevin Owens, rather. And that's what led to this match. Now, this match opened the Rumble pay-per-view that year. It was a very hot opener. Uh, not many pay-per-views opened with a last-man-standing match. If anything, they close out with them, but this one opened with one. I was there that night in Orlando at the Amway Center, and we all loved this match. People were, were completely into it. Uh, it really helped set the tone for the rest of the night. Uh, there was an early cannonball through the padding by the ring announcers area before uh, a whole series of chairs got introduced into the match. Uh, Owens had set up two chairs in the ring. He tried to powerbomb Ambrose through them, but he got backdropped onto them instead. Owens then set up two tables outside the ring. He stacked them up one on top of the other uh, in one of the corners. So they're outside the ring in one of the corners by the ring post. And that would play into the finish later on. Ambrose set up another table outside the ring. Uh, this one right in front of the announcers. He laid Owens on top of the table. He climbed up to the top rope and came down with an elbow through the table. Uh, both men get back to their feet. They beat the 10 count. Ambrose sets another table up in the ring. This should have been a tables match. Uh, he tried for a superplex, but Owens countered it into a fisherman buster suplex off the top rope, down through the table, uh, which looked awesome. Not so much for Dean Ambrose, but that really should have been the finish. Of course, it wasn't. Ambrose uh, did barely get back up to his feet before the 10 count. Pop-up powerbomb by Kevin Owens. Again, Ambrose beats the count. At the last possible second. So now Owens decides to set up four chairs inside the ring. All facing each other. And he lays Ambrose across the chairs vertically. Just sort of lays him backwards. He climbs up top for what I assume uh, would have been a moonsault. We'll never know because Ambrose got up and with Owens, you know, he's on top. His back is turned he gives Owens a shove. He shoves him forward, and he goes flying off the top rope and takes a header through those two stack tables down below that were set up earlier in the match. That was great. Owens could not answer the 10 count. Dean Ambrose retains his championship in what was an excellent match. I love that finish, too. That finish was great. Uh, when you when you weigh the match itself, when you when you really look at the match itself, I thought they worked that last man stipulation here very well. It was all action from the moment the bell rung. They they did the whole uh, punches. We we've seen Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn do this, 
the bell rings and they immediately meet in the middle and just start wailing away at each other. That's how this opened. It was action from bell to bell. Uh, it was all action from start to finish. Two guys who don't like each other just beating the hell out of each other with chairs and tables. So I thought they played the stipulation well and, and the crowd, the energy, uh, just, you know, overall fun factor. It was a fun match. You know, when you weigh all of those things, this belongs in the top 10. Both men uh, did appear in the Royal Rumble match later on that night. Kevin Owens was dumped out by the returning Sami Zayn. Uh, this was this was actually Sami's formal main roster call-up, his formal debut, going from NXT to the main roster. He had, he had answered John Cena's open challenge on Raw many months earlier. And actually, his injury, I think, is what paved the way for Kevin Owens to be called up because Sami got hurt. This is when Sami was flailing his arms around when he came out to the ring and he he tore his uh, rotator cuff, I think it was. And so this was his big return for Sammy to the main roster. And he eliminated Owens, and they ended up being part of the big Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania. Uh, that was the one that Zack Ryder won. So he got a WrestleMania moment. Ryder did, but then he just dropped the championship to Miz the next night. Uh, I'm not sure why, honestly, looking back on it now, I'm not sure why they didn't just do one-on-one -on -one Kevin Owens against Sami Zayn. You know, for the IC title at WrestleMania, I guess they just wanted to do the ladder match and get as many bodies in there as possible, but it probably should have been singles, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, meanwhile, Dean Ambrose went all the way to the end of that Royal Rumble match that year. So this guy's having a big night. He opens the show, last man standing, he retains his championship, he goes to the Royal Rumble, he makes it all the way to the bottom two, it comes down to him and Triple H. And he gets eliminated by Triple H. Triple H becomes the new WWE champion. So Ambrose, much like Roddy Piper in 1992, falls short of becoming both WWE champion and Intercontinental champion uh, in the same night. But Ambrose had a ton of momentum coming out of this show. And then he lost the IC title on Raw the following month in a fatal five-way. Didn't even get pinned for it. He lost to Triple H in a WWE Championship match at Roadblock, that Roadblock special on the network. And then he lost again at WrestleMania to Brock Lesnar. And Ambrose told Steve Austin many months later on his podcast that he had all of these ideas for the match and Brock just was not responsive to any of them. And he was greatly frustrated by that going into that match. Uh, of course, two months after that match, Brock announced that he was going back to the UFC to fight Mark Hunt. So Brock clearly knew he was going back to the UFC when he wrestled Dean Ambrose. and Or, or at least that there was a very good chance he was going to go back to the UFC. And he probably didn't want to go too crazy with the hardcore stuff for fear of, of getting hurt. So he vetoed everything that Dean wanted to do. What I mean, what did he want to use? A chainsaw? <laughs> like, I'm curious now. What wild ideas Dean Ambrose actually had for that match with Brock Lesnar. 